Clay Schlinke, thanks so much for coming on the Infinite Banking Radio Podcast, man. How's it going? Oh, great, great. How you doing, Owen? Uh, I can't complain. Just another a beautiful day in Birmingham. So, yeah. but uh, yeah, like I said in the intro, um, this guy is a rock star down in Texas. He's got uh, a really, really cool uh, business that he does that's uh, created some serious success. So, uh, Clay, man, kind of go into your story, who you are, kind of what you do, and and how uh, how you've grown your business to what it is today. Yeah, yeah, no problem. I can kind of start start from the beginning if you want. Kind of give you absolutely. a little absolutely. So, from, you know, so I graduated from Texas A&M University in uh, 1994, so I'm a little bit older than you, you know, and uh, just slightly, but uh, <laughs> I got into real estate right away. You know, I got into, uh, first got my real estate license just because I, you know, I knew I wanted to be in real estate, but I really didn't have any money. So I got in as a realtor and just started learning the, when you moved to San Antonio, I started learning, you know, the market there and uh, bought my first flip at the age of 20, I guess I was 22 when I bought my first, first house. Um, it was a non-qualifying assumption, which is kind of what they had a lot of back then in the day. They don't really have that anymore. And uh, so, you know, basically what that meant is anyone could, anyone could just sign and take over that mortgage. So I signed, took over the mortgage. I did all the work myself. I grew up in West Texas on a ranch and kind of was pretty handy. So I knew, you know, how to do a lot of the things. So I would fix up the house, sold it, made some good money and jumped into another one. And that's kind of how I really got started in, in, in the real estate business as an investor. And um, I grew that, I guess, from 94 until about I was in the rehab market, you know, until about 2002. And I got to where we were flipping 120 homes every year um, in wow. San Antonio market. So just uh, buying, you know, homes all over the city. Um you know, fixing them up and just, just flipping them is really what I did. And, and uh, then in 2002, I started looking at building single family homes on infill lots. Um, during the time when I was buying old homes to fix up, a lot of times there'd be a lot next door that would come with the sale. So I would spin off the house, keep that lot. And um, that's kind of how I got started building. So I owned a bunch of lots, started building this infill initially. And um, then in, uh, I guess 2004, I got an opportunity to go out to El Paso, um, which is another city in Texas. And we finished out a subdivision, it was 280 houses. And um, during that time, a group from California came in and said, hey, Clay, we really want duplexes and fourplexes. We want that in San Antonio, you know? And I, I, you know, I just said, heck, I can do it. You know, I'd never done it in my life, didn't really know anything about it. I was like, well, let's, let's, you know, you can build a single family home. I can build a duplex. I could build a fourplex. You know, it's, it's just building. So that's how we got started really in our current business. So what we do now is we build duplexes, fourplexes, um, San Antonio. We've got a project in Austin. We've got stuff coming in Houston and Dallas, Fort Worth as well. And uh, really just kind of growing in Texas just because the Texas market is so strong right now. Yeah, it's it's every single day you always hear the 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 jobs, uh, the, those, those numbers come out, the reports, it's always Texas is leading everything. Um, right. can you go back and talk about, like you mentioned earlier, you're doing 120 flips a year and the business that you have, you have them all over the state of Texas. What does that management look like? Because again, you can't be everywhere at once. So what does, right. when you guys were just getting started, you had 120 flips going, how did you, um, how are you able to manage all that? What does that kind of management structure look like now? Yeah, yeah. So the, the 120 clubs, I was really in the San Antonio marketplace. So it really wasn't all over the state. It was just kind of San Antonio, surrounding areas of San Antonio. So I had a couple guys uh, that I'd hired um, that kind of oversaw all my construction. And I pretty much concentrated on finding finding the houses. You know, I, I like I like the chase. I like putting deals together. And uh, that's still true to this day. You know, so I'm, I'm always out looking for new deals, looking for land, looking you know, I like being creative, figuring out ways to structure deals that maybe other people couldn't figure out or didn't want to take the time to figure it out. So I would always, you know, look for the look for the homes. I'd find it, make sure my numbers made sense. And then I would really hand it off to my guys who ran the construction. And then once we got the construction done, I had guys who sold for me and they would handle the sales. And and really that's still true to this day. So I mean, you know, now I I find the deals, I'll find the prop the land. Um, put the deal together, make sure my numbers make sense and my return on investments there. 
And then I have operations manager and I've got project managers under him that run each development. So, you know, once we put the deal together, you know, we really hand it off to our engineers, they engineer it. We do our infrastructure. Um, we always buy normally raw dirt. You know, it's hard to find finished lots for duplexes and fourplexes. So we'll develop it ourselves, put in our infrastructure, and then my guys will will build it. And then I've got salespeople that that sell for me as well. So it's kind of a real similar structure than how it was when I was doing flips. Not much has changed, you know. It's just uh, the only thing now I have uh, both my sons are in the business. My 25 year old son and my 20 year old son are both in the business already. Um, so that's helping me out, giving me a little more time to to do some other things, which I enjoy. No, 100%. So um, as you guys are, you know, building this business, you're coming along. I'm curious, is this all with your own capital or are you borrowing from banks or are you syndicating deals? Are you raising capital? What does that kind of the capital structure look like on the back end of these deals? Yeah, yeah. initially, uh, you know, so when I was flipping homes, I was lucky enough to just kind of I got in with some lenders, like hard money lenders. Um, rates weren't excessive you know they were they were good decent rates and it's a company out of houston and i worked with them for a long time and uh you know they took real good care of me i took real good care of them and i really did everything myself you know i really didn't have partners um even on my first deals uh, when i was you know building duplexes and fourplexes i really never had partners i'd put the deals together on my own um 08, 09, when that crash happened, you know, I got caught up real bad. It was a tough time for me because I had over a thousand lots we were developing. Wow. Um, so that was a, a difficult time to, and a tough way to bounce out of that. So now what we do is I kind of, it's kind of a combination. I'll self-fund some of my deals and then we'll almost like a joint venture with other people. They'll step in as a financial arm, provide the money that's necessary for the land to purchase the land. Um, normally on a deal, let's say if it's a, I'll just give you some, you may give you some rough numbers. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so let's say a deal, we're buying the land for a million, let's say for instance, um, and then we're going to put another million into to develop it. So we'll be into it at 2 million. Um, the bank's going to require 600,000 cash to do that loan. Once we get that loan, that's for our horizontal construction to go vertical. They provide us all the money. We don't have to bring any more equity. So really, I'm, I just will, I, I'm looking for a person to bring in, let's, let's say 30% of that. So 2 million, they need to bring in 600,000. And then they're basically my JV partner at that point. We'll do all the work, all the sales, and then we'll do a profit split with them at the end. And um, the returns are really strong what we can produce. Absolutely. I'd like you to go back for a second talking about, um, in 08 or 09, when not only you, but a lot of people may have got caught up in that. Um, we talk all the time about the success of where, you know, our investors, the people that I speak with are your success where you are now. How did you right. overcome that adversity? Because again, a lot of people got caught up in that time. What was that kind of like digging out of that hole to get to where you are now? Man, it was, it was crazy. It was <laughs> tough. I, I wouldn't wish it on anyone. Maybe a couple people, but, but <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> no, no, no. For but it was it was tough. It was tough, uh, you know, on my family, on everyone, just because I mean we were really got really hammered hard, you know. Um, what helped me get through it was just being able to kind of evolve and and not be stuck in doing one thing. You know, I was, I you know, I built some homes, custom homes. I, I mean, you name it, I kind of did it to hustle, you know, to get out of it. So. I was just adapted, I guess is the best word, you know, and kind of evolved. So I just found other ways to bring in money, other ways to, you know, get through those tough times and be able to, you know, get to where we are today. Yeah, absolutely. So is is um, is real estate your only game right now or do you have your your irons and some other fires? Um, a little bit. So we do actually we have a, a company in Puerto Rico. And uh, we built cell phone towers in Puerto Rico. And um, I kind of fell into that, just being open-minded. You know, if I wasn't open-minded, I wouldn't have gotten into that business. And um, But I got into that business, uh, I guess, about three, two and a half years ago, three years ago. And um, so I've got a partner there in, in uh, Puerto Rico. And uh, we put put the deals together. We'll bring investors in and 
build the cell phone towers and then we'll we'll lease them out to one of the carriers there on the island. And then uh, once they're leased out, then we sell basically that lease. And um, that's a good business to be in. It's tough to get into on the mainland, you know, here, you know, in the United States, but in Puerto Rico, it's fairly easy for us to get into there with our connections and they've kind of ran in the right, right people, you know? I'm I'm curious to hear that kind of story on how were you just vacationing and and you fell into it or what does how how does someone get into the cell phone business in a different country? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I actually um, had a piece of land here in San Antonio and um, had a cell phone tower on it. And uh, when I went to spin off that cell phone tower, I actually was gonna was going to give it to a guy for him bringing me the deal, and I didn't really know what the value of the cell phone tower was. Well. Then um, I, I did some research and um, realized what the value of that cell phone tower was. I was like, wow, I, you know, I'm going to just pay this guy and said, I'm going to keep the cell phone tower. So that's really what I did. I kept the cell phone tower. I sold it. And the guy that brokered the deal for me actually made the introduction to the guy in Puerto Rico. So we kind of hit it off and he said, hey, I've got this opportunity. Are you open to it? And I said, well, shoot, let's let's look at it. You know, so I flew to Puerto Rico met with my partner there and and we just took off from there so we've got uh gosh we've got right now probably 15 different towers working in some phase whether we're we're getting the monopole built whether we're putting it up whether we're in engineering you know it's permitting and it takes time in puerto rico that's the one thing everything takes takes a long time to get done down there but um but it's a good business to be in oh my god i believe it i mean those unique niches like that, it's, they're hard to come by, like you said, but they can pay off in spades, obviously. So, oh, yeah. um, as you're going and, and you're, you're running your real estate business and you're, and you're beginning to scale, what is, when you bring your sons on, like what you said, how, how has that relationship been? Has, has it, has it, have you guys started to butt heads or is it more of like, come on, let me show you guys what to do. What is that kind of relationship? Yeah, yeah. It's, like it's been fun. It's been fun. Both my boys are good. You know, they're, they're both hard workers and uh, they're both real smart. And um, so it's, they're, they're probably, we get probably more frustrated with me to be honest, just because <laughs> I'm, I'm not the best teacher. You know, I'm, I'm, I like to go and like, you know, my wife always jokes, she says, I'm, I'm all gas, no brakes, you know? So I like to Heck go yeah. and move and, so I probably sometimes get frustrated with my boys in, uh, and uh, and and just I'm not because I'm not teaching them you know as like I should probably but um, no we we haven't really butted heads um, they're they're both uh, learning I, I kind of my one son my older son really is really good at finding land um, so he's kind of taken a lot of that load off me and uh, my younger son he's learning how to find land and my and um, he's kind of my younger son's kind of in the business more construction um so i kind of look at them probably at some point almost evolving where when i kind of i'll never retire because i like to work but when i kind of step back some you know my older son will probably focus more on the land acquisition and my younger son will probably focus maybe a little more on making sure the construction's going well those things are happening more of kind of operations and then uh, my daughter is she's going to texas a&m next year she's already going to get in the business. And my wife owns a property management company that manages everything that we build. So my daughter is going to kind of take over that property management company for us. So we'll have the the whole family involved. It's a family affair, man. That's awesome. Yeah. So that, I mean, that's great. What a cool, um, man, that's, that's awesome. So tell me, and, and I know your time is valuable here. Um, when you guys are, like you said, you're acquiring these land, you're doing these deals, where yeah. is this cash being injected from? Because, you know, on this show, we're always talking about using life insurance as our way of financing deals and bringing capital right. to deals while our dollars continuing to earn un- uninterrupted inside of our policies. When you guys are deploying capital into deals, where do the majority is this, of this cash from either y'all or your investors, where, where is this cash being deployed from? Um, Normally just, uh, you know, just, just, money that that's, they've got savings account, I guess, or money set, set aside, sometimes 401k, sometimes you know, retirement accounts. So it's something where I think, you know, we really need to explore more the product that you're able to offer us. Um, I think it's going to work really well. I know that's something you and I've talked about for myself personally, um, but I think it's something that even, even a lot of my investors probably aren't aware of. And 
they probably need to learn about it as well because that might be a great option instead of them just bringing in the money from let's say their personal account they can funnel it through the life insurance and they get more bang for their buck you know yeah i mean absolutely it's it's you know at the end of the day you know we our our brains play tricks on us when we think okay i could i could either just use my own money and not pay interest to somebody else but when we realize that our money keeps earning inside of a policy all the while we're able to use the insurance companies out in the marketplace our returns go from maybe eight to six percent up to in, in the hundreds of percent because we're able to use somebody else's money. And so it ends up right. really, really compounding over time. But um, class, we get out of here, I guess at the end of the day here, what's kind of next for you? I mean, obviously, like you said, you, you're you wanting to scale back, but you love to work. Um, yeah, yeah. Very similar. I think you and I are very similar people where we right. love to work. We love what we do. Um, as you keep building this family kind of empire, every time I talk to you, you're like, oh yeah, my kids are down surfing on the beach in Costa Rica or in, in right, Puerto right. Rico. And I'm like, that lucky son of a bitch right there. That's, <laughs> but it's not luck. That's not luck. That is pure. It's, I mean, you guys have earned it, man. It's, it's hard so work. I'll tell you what, man. I Not many people outwork me. That's the one thing. And I, yeah. I tell everyone that asks me, how have I been successful? I tell them, look, I'm not smarter than anyone at all. I just will outwork you. You know, I outwork you and, and I, I take risks. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and that's one thing it, it, to be successful. A lot of times you've got to be willing to take those risks and, uh, and I have no problem, you know, taking taking the risk. So I think that's that's what's helped me be successful. And, and um, is, but but hard work, work, man. I'm even even when I'm at even when I'm in Costa Rica. To be honest, my wife she'll complain because she's like, "You're still working. We're here in Costa Rica, <laughs> but I'm still working." I'm like, "Man, I just love to work. You know, I love I love do, doing what I do and putting deals together." And and um, so I always tell people like, "Hey, if you want to be successful, anyone can do." And I truly believe this. You, know, you always hear it. Anyone can do anything you set your mind to. And, it, you know, if you're willing to work hard enough, that's why I tell all the young people. I mean, if you want to be successful, just work. I mean, if you're not willing to put in the hours, you're not going to be successful in nothing, in anything you do, you know? 100%. And not to mention as well, it's um, if you stay in it long enough, everybody else is going to end up quitting while you're kind of the last one standing, you know, and you just, and you keep staying after it like that. I mean, it's, um, over time and also and not to mention too i always look at this as someone would say you don't learn to ride a bike by um you know watching a video or reading about it you learn by actually getting on it falling down scraping your knee and getting back on and doing it again it's like just repetition and playing the game where you know higher education the whole point is to not mess up where real life right. is focused on make mistakes early you know fail fast and early and then just get back on the horse and let's keep rolling through like you said oh, yeah. just keep staying in it yeah, I've had my fair share of failures, believe me. And and I always I and I just want, I'm always thinking of other ways to do things, other ideas. My younger son's very much like me in that aspect. He'll come up with all kinds of ideas and and then some are a little crazy, you know, even some of mine, you know, and some of them don't work. But I always tell my son, I'm like, hey, keep coming up with ideas because you never know which one's gonna work, you know. You're gonna have a lot of ideas that don't work, but then you're gonna have some that really do work, and that's what's gonna make the difference. Man, you just stay in it like that, especially in, in obviously you've been such a great leader for your kids where they're already thinking creatively. They're in, they're doing land acquisition. I mean, at 25, 22 years old, I mean, that's just unbelievable. I mean, it's uh oh, yeah. very cool. I mean, you're you're a blessed guy, that's for sure. So before we get out of here, Clay, you know, do you have uh I, I don't know if you have a website or if you have information about you personally that I can put in the bio to where they can, you know, my listeners can learn more about you or or oh, anything yeah. in between like that. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I'll get you get you all that information, and everything, and that way you can put that out there. So would would love that. Awesome. Well, Clay, thanks so much for your time, man. It's it's obviously great to see you, and um, we'll have that link below here in this in this episode, guys. So you guys can learn more about Clay, his business, and the uh, monstrous success that he's had down in uh, Dallas. So, or excuse me, just Texas in general. So again, Clay, thanks so much for coming on, man. We really appreciate your time. Yeah, no, thank you for having me. Really appreciate everything you're doing. Awesome, man. Talk soon. Thank you. All right, take care. Bye. -bye.